Welcome back to Extravagant Fragrances. So I just wanted to follow up on some of the comments about the uh, propylene glycol and the dipropylene glycol. Uh, and that is, I um, wanted to go into some of the common mistakes that, uh, that I've made actually uh, as an incense crafter over the years. And that is, um, you can use propylene glycol. I remember when I moved from the west coast back here to the east coast, um, I had a really hard time sourcing the dipropylene glycol and uh, and so um, I was like well let me see if I could use propylene glycol and um, reached out to some other crafters and they say yeah you can actually use propylene glycol um, but here's what I learned um, that is uh, if you're number one I don't use one inch wood uh, incense cones anymore. I'm sure there are probably some out there that are good quality, uh, but it's very hard to come up on, right? Um, I, I, I have I have had some good quality uh, wooden incense cones, but what I've learned is that uh, some of the wood incense cones tend to have um, I don't know. They just they don't like to burn all the way through and that's kind of what I saw in the comment section on one of the incense videos that I just did not too long ago and um, another thing is especially especially if you're using propylene glycol on wood incense cones you're really gonna have problems because there's a certain amount of there's a certain amount of moisture content uh, that's in propylene glycol right um, and, and so what I'm saying is that it, it doesn't, it just doesn't dry well, uh, especially on wooden incense cones. Yeah, you might be able to get by on that with, say, uh, wood, uh, you know, all wood pulp incense sticks, but on, on uh, wood pulp cones, forget about it. Uh, I mean, even if you're using regular dipropylene glycol on wooden incense cones, the one inch that is, um, from personal experience, I've always had problems with the one-inch um, wooden incense cones. It, it takes a it takes a really good supplier to really know what they're doing, um, or a manufacturer to know what they're doing to make a good wooden wooden incense wood pulp incense cone. Now, um, now if you're using um, charcoal, uh, any size incense cones. That's something I'd love to see is uh, a really good manufacturer manufacture some good charcoal cones um, because I still have yet to see it. There's only one supplier that I know that I think still carries charcoal cones and they're very expensive. Um, but it's not something, charcoal cones from what I see is not something that's just mass produced, right? Um, now, like again, like I was saying, if you're using charcoal cones to make your um, your your incense, and you're using propylene, propylene glycol, yeah, you can definitely use propylene glycol on uh, charcoal cones or even charcoal sticks. Uh, but I mean, as a preference, I prefer not to. You know, uh, I prefer not to use propylene glycol. I think dipropylene glycol is the best. Um, and um, and I mean I've been I've been in the, I've been into the incense, you know, in in body oil business now for I think it's been since 2008 now it's 2023, and I've you know I've seen some like the big competitors, um, I'm talking about the commercialized mass you know, you know, uh, uh, you know guys that are in the wholesale distributors and stuff like that, those guys. Personally, I, I think a lot of the big guys aren't even using dipropylene glycol anymore. I'm not going to mention any company names, but I don't think they're even using it anymore. Um, and I could tell because when you go to light your incense, when you go to light their incense sticks, um, you know, it, it's the soot. You see, the first thing you see when you, when you use the incense stick that doesn't have DPG in it, you're going to see soot, um, which no problem, um, no problem at all. Um, you know, it's just, it's just that first initial lighting of the stick. That's what you'll see. And then after that, it's just a really strong, um, 
the smell is very strong, right? Um, just don't light it right above a white ceiling. You might get a little soot on the ceiling, you know? So, um, but I think what's going on with that is that uh, DPG has become so expensive that uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the the big suppliers now, a lot of the guys, the big crafters now are saying, you know, skip all that. We're just gonna do away with DPG altogether because it's too expensive. Uh, and I think I think they've gotten their their fragrance costs uh, down to the point where it, it doesn't even make sense to use DPG anymore. Um, you know, they're probably just going through that much fragrance. A lot of these big companies. You know, these guys, a lot of these guys will order 55-gallon drums of fragrance oil um, for the kind of operations that they're running, you know. Um, so it's all a numbers game, you know. It's all a numbers game, and if it doesn't make sense, then they're going to discard it. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. Again, I mean, I, I buy competitors' incense um all the time i buy competitive like different brands of, of fragrances even if i don't sell it I, I still buy different brands uh even for personal use you know some of the bokor i buy even for my house for personal use so i mean i'm always checking out that kind of stuff but um but yeah um now let's talk about the ratios ratios really depends on you um you know some people they go way too far you know i mean like some people go to the so far to the point where it's like okay now you're just really just destroying the product you know i've seen people go you know what well we'll put 25 percent you know like they'll go 50 50 50 so 50 percent dpg 50 percent fragrance right some people will even scale it back further and they'll say okay uh 25 percent dpg and 75 percent uh fragrance right um so it's really it's really up to you you kind of have to mess around with it i mean the whole purpose of the dpg though really is to keep the, the soot content down um man these well it is we're definitely in spring guys <laughs> got these uh, wasps flying all over the place um, so yeah, that's my that's my take on that. I'm not gonna say what I do, um, cause I do a, a number of different things for for different products. But um, yeah, that's just something you have to toy around with. That's something you gotta mess with. Every business has a secret, you know, and you have to figure out what your secret is. So um, I hope this helps. If you have any more questions on the incense crafting, uh, like. Uh, share subscribe comment down in the comment section and um, and again I, I'm putting this out you know if there's any if there's any uh, big guys in the business uh, I'm talking guys that have the capital you know you guys got the warehouses you guys have the you know the, uh, all that stuff you know you're ordering by the by the uh, container loads right you know um, consider consider uh doing something here stateside manufacturing here stateside um you know what what what's it going to take to to get charcoal sticks made here in the u.s you know like how hard is that i i personally i've seen some of the um some of the factories the incense stick making factories in, in china and vietnam and it's like why can't we do that here you know um, so it's something I'd love to see. Uh, I'm just trying to kind of just put that that thought out there. Hopefully, somebody, some big supplier will will see this video and kind of um, be the first one to do it. Um, but anyway, um, like, subscribe, share, and talk to you soon, everybody.